Hello, folks. Welcome back. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. Hope everyone's enjoying their... Well, it's Easter, or Easter has passed. So, so I get to drink again. Oh, so delicious. So this is making stay-at-home orders feel a little bit better. And also, oh, let's see here. I, I've actually managed to, to live without wearing pants. Okay. okay, enough about that. Let's talk about some pro wrestling. Because <laughs> in, in a news report, Orlando Ashy declared that the WWE is an essential job. Which, wait, that makes sense because there's no other form of entertainment out there. You can't go to movie theaters. You can't go to sporting events. You can only watch WWE. Uh, as you can tell right back there. See right there. Oh, oh. My cat has obviously found entertainment in the fact that I haven't put away my Lenten sheet yet, which is the probably most coarse unsatisfied uncomfortable blanket I've ever found but she likes it though and she's licking herself while sitting all over it so we're gonna see a lot of her but enough about this nonsense we have wrestling to talk about everyone knows what's going on in the world um, I'm going pantsless I'm drinking too much I'm <laughs> paying way too much attention to my kitty cat back there. So let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Oh, there she goes. Probably going off to get something to eat. Who knows? Uh, a couple of quick shout-outs. Messengers of Death. Whoa, that's a new name. Thank you for your comment about my Easter video. You sort of earned that six count.
Ooh. Mike V. You, sir, are a master of the air guitar. No Ho King! The No Ho King has acknowledged the one, the only, the one who calls himself Hobo Tom. Because you know, No Ho King's just chilling out with his briefcase boombox. Ladder match! You, sir, can crawl out of here. And then, cover roll. You, sir. OMFNG. After all those thank yous, I'm going to get another drink. Ah. Uh. What you can survive as long as you have the little pleasures. Let's start off this Monday Night Raw, and boy, what an interesting Raw it was. As you can tell by the title, it featured very heavily Selena Vega. More Selena Vega. Less NXT jobbers. Yep, that's my title. This is how I think of things here at the Hobo Studios. So we had Drew McIntyre come out, quick little Brock recap. Uh, then he cut a promo. Uh, Drew recaps his fight with the big show. And then Andrade comes out with Zelina Vega. And he says, I'm the one that put you on the shelf. I want my shot at the belt. So that's the main event for tonight. I was actually kind of shocked by that. And I'll get to that shortly. Then the first match. Asuka takes on Ruby Riot, and I'm like, oh, wow, are, is, is Asuka going to lose? Is, is Ruby... This was, this is good because you don't know exactly what's going to happen with this match. So I like the fact there was a little uncertainty because so Asuka really hasn't been the same. Let me center myself now. Since she lost to, or she since she lost the belt. And she hasn't been the same since she lost to Charlotte Flair, but that's a that's a whole other issue. Uh, so with this, it was fun. There was no handshake. Ruby Riot went straight into the headlock. I have no clue what Asuka's saying. And I never want to know what Asuka's saying. It's going to take away some of that mystery. So therefore, no more. Oh, yeah, so no more of all this. I want to know what Asuka says. I, I have no clue. I don't care. It's better without knowing. Uh, so it goes straight to a uh, no handshake into a headlock. Asuka then, then of course, no sold the one shoulder tackle. And there was like a toss leg kick up in the corner. That looked vicious. 
that looks almost like her almost GTS. The hip attack and that sent Ruby Riot to the outside. And then outside, Asuka hit a sliding knee strike. Ooh! That almost looked like it really did connect. <clears throat> Asuka, sends get, Asuka gets sent over the barricade. Then Ruby Riot uses the ropes to, to beat up Asuka a little bit. And then Asuka goes for a couple submissions. First, she goes for an arm bar, then an ankle lock, the Asuka lock. Eventually, Ruby Riot does. Try to reverse that, but then, however, they trade pins for a little bit. Then Oscar cinches in the Oscar lock, and for some reason, it's a lot better not knowing is Oscar going to win. Oh, are they going to bury her? Wait, Ruby right? She hasn't been on in so long. I'll tell you what, this was a fun match. I love the fact that they really didn't. You couldn't really predict it. Uh, it was probably Asuka's 60-40 winning. So that's actually pretty close in comparison to some other matches. This was a good, fun surf and turf match. And Oni Lorcan takes on Alistair Black. And I was shocked by this match because you let Oni Lorcan get some offense in. Oni Lorcan for like... Most of this match looked really good. He looked really strong, especially against Aleister Black. Just a very classic Matt wrestling. Very technical base. Uh, a lot of trading of front face locks into a variety of moves. This is new for Aleister Black. Aleister Black, for the most part, has just been trading blows. Now he's showing his wrestling skills. I think in one match previous, he showed up some pretty good jujitsu skills. I like that. Oni Lorcan. Oh, I never want to see Oni Lorcan in Dark Alley. Because he has those European uppercuts. I don't care what people say. Those hurt. Or at least they look like they hurt. And it's chops! Oh. The chops of Oni Lorcan are lethal. And then he even does a moonsault off the middle rope. And yeah, I like the fact that Oni Lorcan is switching things up. That's really good. And then... I mean, so many European uppercuts. He even used the full Nelson. He used the Boston Crab, a single leg crab. And again, those chops of Oni Lorcan have always been amazing. However, that's not enough because once Oni Lorcan started to trade strikes with Alistair Black, no, no, no. Yeah, that's not going to uh, be go well for Oni Lorcan because eventually Alistair, did hit, Alistair Black did hit the Black Mask. But I'll tell you what, I was impressed by this. Again, for a while it seemed like, is Oni Lorcan going to defeat Aleister Black? No. Again, this is only one of those like 60-40 guest matches. I like that. This is a good, solid cheeseburger match. The other thing I like, especially pertaining to the Oscar Ruby Riot match, when they're so loud, all the trash talking they do, it, it, it takes away from the emptiness of the arena. It makes it exciting, though. So, again, Asuka, the most amazing Japanese trash talker ever, I think. It's so good when she's, like, yelling in Japanese. It sounds so so mean and so cruel and so visceral. It's good to hear. Again, Oni Lorcan. Oh, those chops. They just reverberate all over the place. Oh, Oh, my chest. And then Becky Lynch uh, did a little recap and promo of her own. And also, for some reason, after each match, they're doing an interview. Because, um, oh, what's her face? Sarah Schreiber, formerly of NXT fame. You can see her on some of my videos that I've posted about NXT. They're doing an interview over each match. So it does make the match a little bit longer, which I'm sure... Is good for TV time and exposure. Uh, then Becky Lynch did a recap and promo, and Charlie was there. Charlie. Then we had Sarah Logan versus Shannon Baszler. Shannon Baszler looks like she wants to eat someone. It looks like she literally just wants to punch someone in the face and, and like like shoot nothing, shoot knock them out and leave. 
You just say, I'm done. I'm sick of this place already. Uh, there was a forearm that knocked down Sarah Logan. Sarah Logan got in the ring. Yeah, she had a forearm. And then just hammer fist. And I think even the ref is saying, hey, cover up. <laughs> you know, that's bad. You know, that's bad for you. The referee is telling you to cover up. And Baser just, like, sh like worked, broke Sarah Logan's elbow, even though she stomped on her wrist. This was a short match. I'll tell you what, I really didn't highlight anything besides the fact that Shannon Baser could, like, kill you if she wanted to. Uh, Sarah Logan, uh, it was a piece of toast. Then Shannon Baszler just storms out. I think Charlie tries to interview her. And Baszler just like stares at her. She probably wanted to bite Charlie's nose off or something. Who knows? Then Seth Rollins. I thought we were all done with this Monday Night Messiah garbage. It's continuing though. That's not good. Then we had Austin Theory versus Akira Tozawa. And I'm like, huh? This could be a competitive match. And then, of course, they said that Austin Theory is going to compete for the Money in the Bank match. And I'm like, why, WWE? Why are you going to have a curious Tozawa job out to everyone? Don't you know the mistakes that you made with Kenta? I forget what he was now in NXT. But you're not learning. And also, there's no way a curious as should ever, ever job to Austin Theory. Um, Austin Theory controls most of the match. It's actually pretty good. I, I mean, does a stomp, stomps, punches, an armbar. And then, oh, Austin Theory is a good-looking form, though. Then Akira comes back. Akira Tozawa does a flying sense onto the outside and missile drop kick. He does his he does his normal. I'll tell you what, that missile drop kick looked great, and I don't think Austin Theory was necessarily expecting that. That was good to see. And then uh, Akira, and he started to tee off on him. And then Austin Theory hit the ATL, which is I guess his finish. He wins going into his Money in the Bank qualifier match. I just feel bad for Akira Tozawa. This was a ham sandwich. And Charlie's in the back interviewing Rey Mysterio. That was pretty cool. And that loser Seth Rollins started to talk about faith. You're a loser, Seth Rollins. You're a loser. Actually, I think the one thing when I was driving home, and I do have to send this text message to my friend after my cell phone like charges up, I realized like today was at like 30% because I had up upload some videos in preparations for Thursday's bonus video, what to do while on stay-at-home order. Because I've actually done a lot for some reason. But I'm actually shocked that more religious groups haven't come out saying, yeah, so they're probably stuck at home too. <laughs> That's the good thing. Uh, I, I will have to text my buddy tomorrow about that though. Then we had Angel Garza taking on Tahaki Miles. This was just going to be a straight squash. And I'll tell you what, that lucky camera girl, I think I've seen her because I want to say she works for Full Sail NXT. But she's the one that does all, all like, the star photos. Not only did she get a flower from Angel Garza, she got a smooch, too. Angel Garza's the man. Uh, Miles uh, got caught by Garza. And then, then poor, poor Miles got stretched. Then got stuck up in the tree bow, ate a knee, a wing clipper. Yeah, that was it. It was okay. I, it, was, it was your your 
the small versus small squash match. Meh. It was a can of soup. Of course, Angel Garza tore his pants off. It's so much more interesting when he throws them to a woman in the crowd, though. I don't know. Uh, Sarah Schreiber then begins to interview the Kabuki Warriors, and, and Asuka's just like dancing and speaking Japanese. Only Asuka knows. Then another squash match. And as soon as I saw this, I went, oh, they're not going to make money in the bank interesting. Because they could have done an interesting angle if they had Kairi seen in Asuka where they could double team most people but then see the see some tension when they both go to the ladder. Instead, it was Nia Jax versus Kyrie Sane. Kyrie tried. Uh, Nia Jax did the monster no selling. Um, Kyrie Sane just got tossed around. Then there was the Gorilla Press Simone drop. I forget what it was. This this was actually the one match that was actually predictable. Uh, it's a can of soup. And wow, there was a lot of wrestling in this. Which is why I like there's actually more wrestling without an audience than there is with an audience. That doesn't seem to make sense. Oh well. Uh, then Charlotte Flair, woo! Does an interview. I don't know who has had more Botox or plastic surgeries, her or Dana Brooke. I'll get that out of the way now because Dana Brooke is no longer cute looking. Dana Brooke looks like a Beverly Hills mother I would like to talk to. Uh, then we have Bobby Lashley, and Bobby Lashley's wearing like pants, like the like like the uh, like not not just the trunks but the whole tights. Bobby Lashley's too muscular; he has to wear trunks. But pants just makes his legs. I don't know what it is, but pant but when you wear the tights, your legs look small for some reason. And if you're a person with a smaller frame like Ricochet, that actually works. But if you have big, massive, like, tree stumps for legs, like Bobby Lashley, baby, it doesn't work. And he took on No Way Jose, and I'm like, oh, no. No Way Jose is going to win a match? Uh, so Bobby Lashley took on No Way Jose. Bobby just begins to beat up No Way Jose. Then yells at Lana, shut up. Just be quiet. Oh, this is going to be good. I'm going to see Rusev Day. Lana is the best. Lana, number one. And it'll be interesting to see because Lana is looking a little bit more conservative, too. So, again, that's always a thing. Uh, she seemed happy. She raises Bobby's hand, Bobby Lashley's hand in the end, which kind of... Although there was a surprise roll-up. And I'm like, oh, no. There's no way Jose going to win by a surprise roll. And there was no conga line. No way Jose in the main roster doesn't work without a conga line. And with the COVID-19 coronavirus, you can't have that many people there. Although we did hear that AEW invited people from the Nightmare Factory to be in the stands. Wait a second. You need to invite this guy, AEW. The one, the only, Hobo Tom. To to your, your show. I mean, I'm sure hobos live in these empty stadiums. That would be very simple. It's like, yeah. Like, <laughs> have a pet raccoon or something. That would be cool. Bring my cat. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the stadium cats. They put a collar on. Actually, I'd have to use her... Um, cat collar without her ID stuff on it. That way I could actually tell the difference between her and the stadium cats. <laughs> and every so often just just look for her as she's wandering on the stadium. <laughs> That's a good idea that could be marketable. But then Bobby Lashley hit a vicious spear. Uh, Bobby Lashley wins. Eventually he's up, he doesn't talk to Lana. Halfway up the stage, Lana just grabs his arm, raises him victory. Like the woman should. Shut your mouth and know your role. The women tend to tell me that though. That's that's weird. 
Then we had the Viking Raiders, because I wrote down War Raiders first. Uh, but for the Viking Raiders, take on Ricochet and Static Claw Alexander on Link. Wait, they just formed this team. This isn't going to... Oh, wait, the Bobby Lashley match. I don't know why I forgot to write this down. This was eh, a, can, a can of soup. And then we got Seth Rollins again. Then we finally, as I just alluded to shortly, like seconds ago, we had the Viking Raiders taking on Ricochet and Cedric Alexander. Ricochet. This was good. I know, um, I don't think Ricochet teamed up with the Viking. Maybe, I think Ricochet did team up with the Viking Raiders in New Japan once. So I think it was Ricochet. He was part of Taguchi Japan. With the Viking Raiders. Taking on like Bullet Club, Lost in Garbage, and the Japan, and Suzuki Goon. It was one of those weird like 12 man tag matches they have in Japan every so often, so I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, then Ricochet starts off against Eric's pretty good. Uh, Sutter takes out Ivar. That's not easily done or said. Ivar ate a Frankensteiner. That was amazing. Alexander, he dives on poor Eric, who's outside the ring. Ivar's just too strong for both. Ivar's the bigger, the big boy of this match. And then for some reason, Ricochet tried to tag the foot of Cedric Alexander. Jim Hart, uh, James Cornette, I'm sorry, must be rolling in his, his bed right now, having nightmares in a, in a sweaty mess, saying, you try to tag the foot? You can't do that in, in, in a pro wrestling match. You have to tag the hand while holding the tag rope. I always thought the tag rope was there just to keep you, I want to say that you had to be within like the arm reach of like your corner. So if you look at like the old tag masters, as long as they like were like near the turnbuckle and with one hand, they could reach out for a tag. They had to be within like an arm's length of that corner. And that's about what the tag rope is. So that kind of makes sense. Although he had the, he had the rope. So but it had to be on the hand. So whatever. Uh, let's see, where was I? Ivar again is too strong for both, and they, uh, the, Vic the Viking Raiders tag him pretty fast. It was a blind tag to Eric. That's pretty good. Cedric and Ricochet were both tossed over the top rope. And that's when Ivar starts to fly. Uh, the Viking Raiders, again, very good, solid, big guy pace, just trying to wear down. Ricochet and Cedric Alexander. Uh, yeah. Then there was a flying flatliner onto Ivar. That was great. Ivar ate a lot of moves in this match. I was shocked. Uh, Ricochet again started to kick both Viking Raiders. <laughs> the, the the end was kind of weird, but then he then he missed. And then there was a double knee to the face by Eric. That hurt. The backdrop forearm. There was some weird botch ending. I think they tried to do the Viking experience, but they were off by like a foot or two. So it's more more like a pop up, like just throw to ground thing. So that was okay though. Overall though, I'll tell you what, Viking Raiders went over, but Cedric Alexander ate the pin. But I'll tell you what, Cedric Alexander and Ricochet for their size looked pretty strong. It was another good surf and turf match. Then Charlie's back with the Street Profits and Bianca Belair. And Bianca Belair is taking on the persona of Selena Vega, trying to get the Street Profits from their parting ways to focus because the Viking Raiders have always beat them. Well, that's good. They're starting to use Selena Vega's old gimmick in NXT, turning Andrade, and she turned Andrade Cien Almas, the party guy that would hang out with, with all the senioritas and go out to clubs and drink vodka on the way to the ring. To a more professional wrestler. That's good to see. Then we had our main event of the evening. I was shocked because this was actually really good. It was Andrade taking on Drew McIntyre. And wow. Zelina Vegas. Tiny. In comparison to Drew McIntyre. Like she literally like the top of her head. Comes to like the bottom part of 
Drew McIntyre's chest. And you're like, she's tiny. And oh, so starts off with a slap. Drew McIntyre just wanted to rip the head off Andrade for what he did to him, in theory. Uh, he probably shouldn't have held onto the ropes. That's a whole other issue. That slap. Oh, and the headbutt. And the chops. Oh, so vicious looking. Uh, Drew then just starts to beat down Andrade. Eventually, Drew dropped Andre <laughs> Andrade into a barricade. That looked like it hurt. Uh, eventually, there's distractions. And Andrade then goes after the left arm, which is the surgically repaired bicep arm. Uh, he runs it into the post, bangs it the steps, does the arm bar on the ropes. However, Drew McIntyre has enough to come back with the big boot. Then there was a tomahawk, flying tomahawk shot from the top rope. That's good to see. Uh, and Andrade got backdropped onto both Angel Garza and Austin Theory, who were there at ringside. Vega eventually does her distraction, but you know what? Drew McIntyre is an Alabama slam. That's three, two, one, Claymore! And Andrade ate the pin, and I'm kind of shocked because Drew McIntyre did not become the U.S. champion. So, And I was shocked. It was also a clean finish. Um, so this match, a good surf and turf match. And then Garza comes in with a chop, chop block to the knees. Then Seth Rollins comes in, super kicks. And does double stomp to a downed opponent. It was still a really good match. I'll tell you what, this was a darn good Raw. For all the bad things, there was still a lot of good stuff. This was a good cheeseburger Raw. Very quickly, in probably about a minute, um, to let you know about the rest of the week. Tomorrow I am live streaming Impact Wrestling unless something truly amazing happens, which I doubt at this point. Uh, Wednesday is going to be a review of AEW. It's going to be on typical delayed video format. I don't like video streaming because I've already gotten the shame on the finger wag of doom from AEW. Thursday I'll be putting my bonus, bonus video. Ten things to do while under stay-at-home order. Friday is going to be SmackDown. Oh, wow. Then look at that. Saturday, Sunday. I can relax again. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I hope I brought a little levity in your life. Again, if you're staying at home, well, you can drink because you won't be driving. And just like you saw me to begin with, you don't have to wear pants either. Bye.